and welcome back. And we are about to venture off into our third topic of the day. Now, this one, of course, close to us again. Uh, the Rotary Club of Belize Sunrise and Pathlight Teacher Training. Now, in with us, we've got, uh, uh, we actually have Hugo Miguel, who is the president-elect of the Rotary Club of Belize Sunrise. Sorry. Hugo is all the way there. Oh, you stand out, man. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle, of course, we have Consuelo Godfrey, who is the associate director, Pathlight teacher training uh, program and uh, to my left here all the way in the corner is none other than Nilna Muschamp who is the director of Fat Light teacher training program as well. Guys good morning it's so nice to have you in and welcome. Thank you. Good morning thanks for having me. Can I throw this out one like one time? <laughs> Teacher Nildo is actually my teacher in standard three. And she is so beautiful, my goodness. He was good. He was good. <laughs> so guys, it's here, um, Pathlight Teacher Training. We know for a fact that Rotary Club of Belize Sunrise, you know, you guys are always standing out in terms of making a difference in our country. Now, where did the initiative come about and uh, talk to us about it? Actually, it came from, I had met um, a lady from Florida that was also a past Rotarian, and she was always looking to do or get involved into different projects here in Belize. And we had worked on one that involved scholarships, and then we moved on to Pathlight. And Pathlight for us seemed like, a, like just a terrific idea. Um, our focus is really education, and um, while we focus on the south side of Belize City, where there are opportunities to expand um, um, greater access to education to, for teachers to really um, up the game, so to speak, you know, to, and, and therefore reflect that onto the students, then we're all for that. And mm -hmm. Pathlight was just, was just perfect. It had teachers that were committed. It had people that had gone through the system. It had success stories. All it needed was funding. Right, and that's where we come in. No, we're we're not a wealthy club. I mean, you know, we work hard for for whatever yes. pennies we get for our projects, but what Rotary does is is allow us to utilize the Rotary International Network mm -hmm. and access partners from overseas, um, other Rotary clubs, and in partnership, we can then develop the project mm -hmm. and then apply for a grant mm -hmm. and the Rocher Foundation. I mean, it, it's, it's very rigorous, the, and the process is. We went through that and we got the grant approved and that's how we managed to get funding. And, and, and it's not only about the money now, it's about working together with the Pathlight -like group, yeah. with the folks to actually, everything from logistics and all this handling. I mean, it's, it's moving teachers around and three different locations. They'll speak to that, but yeah. it's, it's it's a, it's a serious program, and we, we saw it last year, and we saw how enthused the teachers were, how they came out of it, and, uh, and, and it's perfect. Over the summer, just before um, school opens up again, it, it, it's, just, it's just an ideal project, and yeah. you know, we hope most teachers can take advantage of it. And so the funding that you've been able to acquire will allow for training of how many teachers? Hmm. We have the high school and primary. What, what would the breakdown be? 700. Wow. wow. Five and two, five hundred primary and two hundred high school, correct? It's three. That's about three fifty primary and three fifty mm. high wow. school. Wow, oh, that's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. When you multiply that by the amount of kids in classrooms, mm -hmm. um, exactly. But this is a you know I, I recall last year um, just speaking about Pathlight. You guys have a very innovative training program that you do uh, implement with teachers. Tell us a bit first, though, about your history, how you, how you first uh, got yourself planted here in Belize mm -hmm. and, and how you ladies got involved. Definitely. So Parlight existed um, some 11 years ago. Yeah. It started with a small group of what we, we actually have three programs. It started with the first program called Sponsorship Plus, uh -huh. where we had sponsors who would sponsor children, high school students going to, um, students going to high school from the Belmopan area, surroundings. Mm -hmm. and, um, we, we had these sponsors who were able to provide for these students, but then we realized this was wrong. I said 10 years ago, mm -hmm. there was a particular grade that was needed for you to enter high school. Wow. You, um, mm -hmm. Compre to enter Compre, you need to have, in those days, 80% or so. And so we, were, we found out that the children were not able to get the grades that were necessary yeah. to enter mm -hmm. high school. And that gave birth to our program that is called the Teacher Training Program. So 11 years ago, 
we started our teacher training program where we work with a group of teachers from two villages, Armenia and St. Margaret. Mm -hmm. And um, working with these teachers, being with them in the classroom, we, s we, start s we, we started to see how grades the children were performing a lot better. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they were able to attain grades that would have allowed them to enter high schools. Mm -hmm. you know, at this particular point, uh, w a, lot of the, a lot of people are actually moving into jobs just to gain a paycheck. And so to know that Pathlight is actually venturing off and trying to provide teacher exactly. training, that's a great initiative. But yeah. are we getting the amount of people that we're looking for? Well, this year we're doing it a little bit different than last year. Last year we also got the sponsorship from Rotary. And before last year it was exclusively in Belmopan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the first time we ventured out of Belmopan, we had our conference in Belize City. Yeah. And it was we, um, it was the first time in the city, and we actually, we were very su successful when it came to having um, primary school teachers out there mm -hmm. and high school teachers. Yeah. And, and we are talking about July, the month of July. You know teachers, they actually have two, <laughs> well, actually it's one month, mm -hmm. and July yeah, will be month. the month that they have for themselves. Yeah. Uh, August is a, it's like a call. Yeah. Um, when they August call you for workshops, yeah. they have to come out. So we had, we had, we, we were satisfied with the results last year. And um, we have been getting requests throughout the whole country for us to be in our districts. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't, um, we can't because of human resource and even finance to be in our six districts. So what we did this year, and I like what we did, we grouped the country into zones, the northern, the central, and the southern mm -hmm. zone. And in the northern, we are having the conference for the Corozal and the Orange Walk teachers in Orange Walk. Mm -hmm. In the central, we are having for Belize and Cayo teachers in Belmopan. And for the south, we are having for Toledo and Stan Creek teachers in Dangriga, mm -hmm. so that they can come to one center. The idea is that next year, keeping that same structure, instead of Orange Rock, it will be Corozal. Instead of Belmopan, it's going to be Belize City. Instead of Dangriga, it's going to be PG. Okay. And what do, what, as a teacher, what do they learn at these conferences? Yeah. One of the things that we have been hearing from the teachers, and the reason why they come, is because we show them first-hand strategies. Mm -hmm. So it's not mm -hmm. like telling them, this is what you need to do, this is how you need to do, or basically telling them the theory behind it, they come and they experience it there. Mm -hmm. So they are yeah. able to understand and be able to thereafter yeah. apply. What are some of the unique skill sets that a teacher can learn at the training that uh, can really help them in the classroom? Well, this, this the year our team, team. Mm -hmm. um, is actually focusing on the national priority, mm -hmm. which is literacy. And you mm -hmm. know what, you come to this workshop, for whichever venue, you are going to learn necessary skills that you need to address to develop a child. We're seeing literacy, literacy skills, but if you can read, mm -hmm. you can do social studies, you can do mathematics, you can do all yeah. subject areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, a couple skills, we're going to show teachers how to level books. And what does that mean? Books? And yeah. leveling books mean that if I am a standard five, if I am a standard five students, and you test my ability for reading, I might not be reading at a standard five level. I oh. might be reading at a lower level. Yes. And so identifying first my level where I am as a re as a student, which is we'll be teaching that as well how to identify these um, levels of, of students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, being able to do, being able to do that after and thereafter finding a book that will match my skill or my ability. Mm -hmm. I am in standard, I'm a standard five student, but I read as a standard yeah. two um, yeah. child. And so a book that will be relevant for me, teaching the same concepts, I'm yeah. teaching my, my grammar, I'm teaching my writing, mm -hmm. but using a, a, a reading, a reader that is, that is my level. Most yeah. students. What has been, one second, mm -hmm. what has been the experience from the teachers in the training um, in the challenges in identifying some of these strategies because let me let me be clear uh, ministry of education has workshops every year and in fact i think all organizations bombard teachers literally with let me train teachers with this and that mm -hmm. and there's so many different options so yeah. what is the unique value in going to path light training so another good thing that we did this year i said we are actually working on the topic that they, that is a national priority yeah. here mm -hmm. in our country which is literacy but we also um Prior to, prior to this month, we went to each district education center, yeah. meeting every manager in the country and asking them for this, their teachers' need. What nice. is needed in Corozal that, yeah. that, yeah. that we can provide to the teachers when it, when it comes to literacy? Yeah. So we were in Corozal, we were in Stanquick, we were yeah. in PG, getting this information from, 
from the district managers. Fantastic. So it's really catering to, Zooming um, to needs. what the particular region may be lacking yes. in or and just need enhanced. Yes. And one of the things that um, Nilda and I have been doing, um, well, I recently joined Path Light this year, but yeah. one of the things that Nilda and I have been working on in terms of providing structure to what we do with the training, yeah. the model that Path Light uses in terms of teacher training is a little bit different. It's more innovative. Mm -hmm. It's more, um, we have an implementation process, so there's a follow through. So this year, we're actually going to be more intentional and more focused with following teachers who have taken our training mm -hmm. and, and kind of look at them to see where they will be in the next year or two yeah. and what impact our training has on student achievement. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that we know we have found with teachers is that they go to these trainings, they go to these workshops, and uh, the workshops might be very good. Um, and then they go back into their classrooms and then we find that they're not... Well, Applied. for some reason, there's a gap between what they've learned at the mm -hmm. workshop and what they're implementing in yeah. the classroom. And ultimately, we want teachers to be able to, to affect and impact student achievement. Yeah. Isn't that what we want? We want the PSE scores to look better. We want the BJAT scores to look better. Yeah. Overall, we want kids to be reading at the grade level that they're supposed to be reading. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm happy that Nilda mentioned the leveling of the books because one of the things the ministry has asked teachers to do is to have a classroom library. So that's one of the requirements. You okay. should have a classroom library. And it's wonderful to have books on a shelf that uh, looks like a library and <laughs> appears to be a library. <laughs> but we find that some of the challenges, and teachers themselves have said this to us, and we have been in the system long enough to know that this is indeed a challenge. Yeah. They need to know that the books that they have in their classroom libraries are age-appropriate one, that they, in terms of content and pictures and the way it's structured, that it's appropriate for the age groups that are in their classroom. And so yeah. we're going to teach them that. That's a skill, mm -hmm. that's a technical skill that I think is one of the biggest, um, if I want to say, ahas that's going to happen at the conference. Yeah. But in addition to that, and I know Nilla is all excited to talk about the content. I see it in you too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited um, because one of the uh, next challenge is that when teachers teach liter literacy, uh, in their literacy skills in their classroom, especially as it relates to the language arts curriculum for primary school, managing your class, setting up your class, setting procedures and being consistent with it have, has been a real challenge for teachers. So we're not going to give too much details because we want the teachers to, <laughs> to But be they're going to get yes. skills on how to do that. They're going to get this. We have a beautiful management tool that we're going to teach them. Yeah. And they're going to love it. And we know, I know, just having read, done the re research and, and, and Nilla and I have prepared um, in terms of our reading and our research building, more schools are going to want it. So yeah. I will encourage if you're a primary school teacher, if you really want to be successful this year in language arts teaching and literacy skill development, to come to a Path Light Conference this year because the skills and the tools that we're going to provide specifically this year is going to be off the charts. High school, we're doing literacy across subject areas. Okay. And um, the trainers that we have employed, both uh, from, from um, the U.S. as well as uh, locally, um, are really good at what they do. They're very, you know, uh, intricate in what they're going to be teaching teachers. So the high school teachers will also be given some really wonderful, innovative things to do with, with students in their classroom, especially between the ages of 13 and 16, yeah. which is where okay. we find it. Do you, do you help teachers uh, to empower themselves to work with administration? Because the challenge when you train what we call lower level staff is that they still have to work under the guidance of what the administrator says. So if I want to change the whole setup of my classroom and do something interactive, principal or supervisor may pass and say, what are you doing? Stick to the curriculum. So do you teach them how to be able to get that buy-in from management level? One of the things that we are actually doing, and we did it last year and the previous years, where we actually have a session for administrators, for leaders, and Great. everything that is done with the primary school teachers, that is done with the high school teachers, is in alignment Excellent. with what they are going to learn yeah. as principals and as administrators. Right. And I didn't miss, Consuela, that you said you follow up with students. What's, what's your success rate at, at this point with the teachers and training, and, and how do you monitor it? Well, the monitoring program will We'll get a little later in, in, in our segment, we'll talk about some of the structures that we're putting in place. But I know one of the things Nilda and I are passionate about, and I know Nilda especially is passionate, uh, probably more so than me, because numbers, are, numbers I'm, I'm kind of scared of numbers sometimes, <laughs> is the data collection and being able to collect really good data, which is something we're lacking in our education yeah. system, Absolutely. about teachers' progress performance uh, improvements and how that then impacts student achievement. Yeah. So we do have an intervention program that we work with schools that we have numbers and those numbers have been proven to be very successful uh, once we get the buy-in from the teachers and the principal and of course yeah. parents and students. 
But in addition to that, uh, we're hoping within the, the year after this conference, this particular conference is going to be a turning point for us because this is where we're actually going to be following mm -hmm. a group of so teachers. So you start to track that. Yes, mm -hmm. we're awesome. going to be tracking them over a, a period of two years to be able to see how successful the training has been. Excellent. You know, when it comes to Potlight, uh, Potlight International, from what we're hearing here, from what we're hearing here is simply great work. But one of the things we notice about students, of course, in, in today's day and age, they prefer to have a hands-on rather than to be in the classroom. Exactly. And theory, what are we doing for teachers with that? And speaking of teachers, I think we've got one right here as well in the we studio. Have Paul. Yeah, 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 we yeah. have Mr. Paul Norales. He's one of our high school trainers. Excellent. Uh, Paul will be joining us in two of our district uh, locations. So, and uh, so, yeah. Yeah. so unlike, like, unlike previous years, we have had exclusively foreign trainers. Yeah. This year we are trying to change that. We are getting 50% American trainers and we have, we have our local Belizeans that are effective as good, yeah. and as efficient as the others. So we are getting 50% of our Belizean trainers Excellent. Um, to be a part of it. And Paul is a part of that this year. He's and that type of collaboration is, is, is still a learning tool for yes. the trainers as well. Exactly. My, my, my final question has to do with um, the accreditation and how this fits in with the Ministry of Education. Okay. Um, so will this count towards my uh, teacher okay. development training yes. if I attend Pathlight? So we definitely have good relationship with the Ministry of Education. Yeah. And all our workshops are accredited by TED, so that's the, the Teacher Education Development Services, where we apply for these um, workshops that we have, and they give, um, they in turn give teachers the CPD hours that are needed. And teachers know that they have to accumulate 120 CPD hours in five years. Mm -hmm. And so for this workshop, um, there is a two-day workshop conference, and they can accumulate four in one day and four in another. So they have eight, eight CPD yeah. hours. Yeah. This and how can yeah. they register to be a part of this conference? Yes. What do they have to do? Yes. So on our flyer that we that we that was shown earlier, there is a registration um, path to take. Mm -hmm. um, if you go online, you can register online at our pathlight.org um, web page. They, they, we also, what we are also doing is that we are sending these um, registration forms to principals all over the country so that they can print and they can have their, their teachers sign them out and then um, email them back to us. They, al they also have the option to go to our offices. We have an office in Belmopan mm -hmm. where I am stationed and we have an office in Belize City mm -hmm. where Concello is stationed. So they can go in the office and register there as well. And, and we want to appeal, um, I personally want to appeal to the high school teachers because we know that um, there's not, when we look at the CPD months, there's not always a lot of workshops for high school teachers yeah. per se. There's a lot more primary than they are uh, high school. We're also, um, we also have spaces available for preschool teachers. So we really want to appeal to our preschool teacher audience mm -hmm. and high school teacher audience to sign up. Um, besides getting the application through your principal or your head teacher at your preschool um, center, mm -hmm. uh, you can visit our website. It's on our website. Um, all our contact information is going yeah. to be is, is, is on our flyer. We've sent packages to all schools. Uh, we've also sent emails to schools as mm -hmm. well, uh, countrywide. So if you're interested in, in attending the conference this year in Belmopan, it's going to be the 9th and 10th of July. And it's going to be uh, for primary school, it's going to be at the Honor and Glory Center. And for high school, it's going to be at the George Price Center in Belmopan. Okay. And, and Orange the Walk. School, the preschool will yeah. be at like yes. and, and teachers from Belize City, as well as Belmopan and Cayo, can attend the Belmopan one if they would like. Yeah. Yeah. Teachers from Belize City can also attend the Dangriga one and okay. the Orange Walk, the one in Orange Walk. Orange Walk one is on the 12th and the 13th. Um, both primary high school and preschool will be at IT Vet. And then in Dangriga, we're all at the Ecumenical College on the 16th and 17th of July, mm -hmm. um, as well as with uh, preschool there. Uh, most people know myself and Miss Nilla because we used to be with the Ministry of Education, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're well known in, in, in that Just regard. Just now that you're path yeah. But Now we're path <laughs> yes. So there is a cost of registering. Yes. Yeah. And okay. it's $10. Yeah, we're charging $10 for the two days. It is important for teachers to know that we have a, a limited amount of space. Yes. Okay. So because of the venue and because of the amount of um, human resource that we mm -hmm. have, 100 primary school teachers in each of the three Inclusive venues and 25 okay. preschool teachers and for high school 100 high school teachers which wow. is inclusive of the administrators as well All right. so and it's right now because we have been in we met with some principals in orange walk and principals in in um, corazal and they are registering i think we only have a few more seats for up north all yes. right mm -hmm. so that means uh register today exactly <laughs> it's probably safe yes and then um, payment 
could be done four ways. So you can pay, if you have a credit card and you want to pay through our website, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You are in the Belize City area, Belmopan area, and you want to pay at our offices, we do that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can call any one of us at the numbers you see there on the screen, and we could provide you with the Scotia Bank information so you could deposit. What schools have been doing is they've been collecting, or a group of teachers collect, mm -hmm. one person deposits, and then they just uh, WhatsApp or um, email us the receipt. And then we register the teachers. Some teachers register themselves and they just send us a copy of their payment. Mm -hmm. So we have various ways in which they can pay to make it a lot easier and more convenient. For Excellent. Them. So as you're saying, there are limited spaces available, so register early. Dangriga still has uh, some space. So we are saying, you know, if you were really, especially for the high school teachers, you can, you know, do a, a road trip and a group of you can go down and experience Dangriga. Yes, yes. Dangriga as well. of course. <laughs> and then um, and, and attend the workshops there. I would really want to appeal to all our teachers though, because I think this is not only uh, needed, um, the level of technical skills that you'll be learning at the conference these two days, you can't get anywhere else. Excellent. It's so cutting edge stuff, you know, I was impressed when I went last year and I saw the type of courses that were available. So you go in and you decide which ones you want to take. Yeah. So, and, and they're so customized. I mean, talking yeah. about customizing reading levels for, for students mm -hmm. and all that books, but for teachers as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll know where your weaknesses lie and mm -hmm. you can pick or where your interests are. I want to yeah. beef up on that. I want to know more about yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's terrific. All right. All right. So once again, uh, if you want to be able to register, you have a website that you people can go to. Patlike.org. Okay. Patlike.org. That's it. Exactly. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing the details, and we really hope that teachers take advantage of this opportunity uh, that has been afforded through the sponsorship of exactly. Sunrise Rotary, and uh, best of luck. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank we're we're going to go ahead and take our final break, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned.